Testing one, two, three. I believe we are live. Let's just confirm that. Looks like it. Very good. Okay. Well, this is uh, TFSN 0008. Hello, Reading Ranch. How are you tonight? I'm good, I'm good. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. I'm playing around with the uh, streaming software here. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is uh, TFSN Livestream 0008. Uh, glad to hear you're good. And uh, I just brought some leaves in from the greenhouse. I thought we'd put some various leaves under the microscope and have a close look at them. So uh, we'll give it a few minutes so uh, other people can come in if they want to come into the live stream. And then, uh, then we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, glad to hear you're well, Redeemed Ranch. Uh, we're starting to get some spring weather up here finally. Uh, although. The sun was out today earlier, and then uh, then it went in and it got windy and it kind of got raw out. But uh, it's supposed to hit 51 Wednesday, and then I think rain, some rain Thursday, Friday, back in the upper 40s, mid 40s. Oh, here is in Tivoli, New York. Sorry. <laughs> so about 90 miles north of New York City. <coughs> California, Sonora, oh, warm weather most of the year, right? And sun, oh, I like that part of it. Plenty of snow this year, really. Is that is Sonora, Northern California? I don't know California that well. I know bits and pieces, but not really. 20 to 25 degrees in snow. Well, see, I wouldn't mind that so much if the snow season was shorter. But man, once it gets cold in November here, we're pretty much cold till at least April. Last couple of years, it hasn't even warmed up till like June. It's been really frustrating. It's like spring comes and then you kind of you're still wondering if you're going to get frost. We've had some late frost that uh, messed up the uh, orchard crops a few times in recent years. Well, so uh, I think we're going to go ahead and transition over to the microscope. And uh, we'll have a look see at this. Uh, what's in there right now is a uh, foothills of the Sierras. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful area, though, huh? Yeah, I could take a little snow if I was in the foothills of the Sierras. I just got a new stove recently this winter, big one. It's called a Sierra. And it's awesome, awesome stove. Made me think about how beautiful the Sierras are. <laughs> I don't know, just a connection point. Um, so what we're looking at here is a tomato leaf, and uh, let me get the rest of this transition. There you go. Pellet stove. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I like the concept of the pellet stove, but I uh, I like the independence of firewood. If you got to go buy pellets, you're kind of stuck in the same position as most other fossil fuels. It's granted it's a renewable fuel, but you're still uh, most pellet stoves are dependent on power, as far as I know. And uh, and of course you got to buy the pellets. And I went to wood because it's really cheap. Yeah, I'm not picking on it. I just that's I chose wood stoves because I can cut my own fuel. Um, but hey, either or, it's better than fossil fuels. And I hear the pellet stoves are really nice, actually. So 
So this is a tomato leaf. I believe this is a beefsteak tomato, but I'm not entirely sure because it was a volunteer. Let's see if I can get the focus. I'm looking at the wrong screen for that. <coughs> That's decent. And that's under the 4X. So, uh, not super interesting. Let me kill this overhead light. And now we're just looking right through the leaf. And I'll bring the brightness up a bit. Mm, is that too much? That's too much. Let's go down to light. Well, we can see the veins there. That's kind of cool. I think we're starting to see the stomata. I think that's what those little specks are. Yeah, 4X, yep. And yes, tomato leaf, either beefsteak or a large cherry. I'm not sure which. I think it's a beefsteak plant. So yeah, so that's 4X. And I guess we could uh, have a little pan around. Take a look at different parts of the leaf. But I kind of want to go up one more reticle here. I kind of want to go to a 10x. So let's see if we can jump to 10x without any trouble here. Yep, and I got a little focus work to do. There you go, that's pretty good, huh? Which is. Oh, look at that. See the trichome sticking out there? That little uh, clear looking hair like thing, that's a trichome. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, trichomes on plants usually are, they're usually what puts out the, uh, the resins or the essential oils that the plant produces. Those are one of the places they pump it out. Yeah, isn't that cool? Those are one of the places they pump out those oils uh, to protect themselves. And I think they pump the oils out of those little trichomes as, as kind of like a spout. And I think that just kind of comes out and uh, coat, helps coat the leaf surface. And that's what prote protects the leaf from uh, infection by fungi and bacteria. And so when you get trace mineral nutrition right and plant health right, you get a lot more of these trichomes on the plant and consequently a higher essential oil production. Uh, trichome, I think there's no B. Uh, it's uh, T-R-I-C-O-M-E, I believe. E as in echo. Uh, but So that's interesting. I wasn't expecting to see that on a tomato plant. Uh, you can tell how little I've had this microscope out. But that's, uh, that's kind of cool to see right along the stem there. Let's just have a, uh, a little pan around and see what else we can find on this leaf surface. Some kind of a interesting line there. I'm not sure what that is. Let's see if we can dial that in a little bit. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That could be a vein or it could be a spider web rusting across it from uh, the greenhouse. I really don't know. Let me take a look and see if I can see with my eyes anything about that. No. I can't really tell. Well, we'll uh, pan around a little more here. <laughs> it's pretty cool to see that trichome. I'm hoping I have a uh, rosemary leaf here. I'm hoping to show you trichomes on a rosemary leaf as well later in the uh, stream here. Is my audio okay, by the way? Can you hear me all right? Okay, that's the extent of our pan range on the scope. So we'll go back over to a different part of the leaf. Okay, good. Glad you can hear me. Thank you. Appreciate the feedback. Alright, so that's in focus pretty good. I believe those little dark green spots, I believe the stomata are the, the hole 
looking thing in the middle of that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, should we jump up and take a look under, say, a 40x and see what we can see? Let's go to a 40x. Oh boy. See if we can zoom on that. That's went too far away. Must be. So increase that light a bit. It'll come in a little closer here. Can't seem to hit it. Man. Doesn't seem like it should be this looks cold, does it? For a full light. Ah, open the aperture up a little bit more, <coughs> and then now let me see if I can scope us in. Come on, baby. Give me that forty x. So, for those of you who are still watching, this confirms my microscope skills are less than desired, we'll say. <laughs> Good to know where you stand. <laughs> I don't know why I can't get that to focus. Let me see if I can get it through the regular lens. Easier to uh, to tune it through the uh, the actual microscope lens, which I'm now looking through. I apologize for the delay. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. I don't seem to be able to get it. So I don't know. I think I think that's more than far enough away. Hmm. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll go back to the 10x for now. I obviously have to uh, do some practicing with the microscope here. But um, either way. I think it's interesting to, uh, yeah, I feel like there's maybe there's too much light. It's part of the problem. Oh, and I got the aperture open here. Uh, okay, well, the easy rule is when you can't figure it out, go back to the lowest setting. There we go. Then we'll go back to the other one should be within a relative range. Is there something going on with these here? <sighs> Frustrating. Alright, I'm going to dial this light back a bit. Or up. I think it needs to come up. Off it. 
don't seem to get a focus point. Hmm. I don't understand what's going on here. Am I in a bad part of it? Ferris Bueller. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. I went the wrong way. That's why. Because I went to the 100x lens, which seems to have some sort of an issue. It's also very tricky on the focus. So, my bad. So, there you go. Sorry about that. I'm just, yeah, I'm just horrible at microscopes. I'm just not familiar with this microscope. I wouldn't say I'm horrible. I'm just not super experienced with microscopes. And then, of course, uh, not having used this one very much, I'm less proficient. But, uh, see if we can dial this in. On 40x, come on, baby. Can't get it on 40, so we'll go back to the 10. Well, anyway, so that's a tomato leaf. Yeah, 40x. Uh, the last good clean picture you saw was uh, 10x. Okay, sounds good, Geeky Gardens. Thanks for checking in. Yeah, you'd be able to skip all my uh, <laughs> silliness on the microscope. <laughs> Save yourself some time. <laughs> Okay, there we go. This is 10x. Uh, yeah, that's 10x. Uh, Redeem Ranch. So, uh, I think what we'll do is, now that we've looked at the tomato leaf, I've got a few other leaves here. And we'll jump over and have a look at... Um, I think we'll have a look at an olive leaf next. So, just a sec. Why? Well, uh pull the mater leaf out <coughs> and put the uh, olive leaf in and I know I should be preparing these slides with water and all this kind of stuff but uh, just kind of playing around at the moment and I haven't really set up uh, the supportive lab gear Squaw. Does it want to sit squaw? And we'll start back at the 4x. <coughs> and we'll bring this under the scope. There we go. There we go. So this is an olive leaf. And I'll try and get it tweaked in on the focus. Hmm. What is strange? Which way is... I think right there is probably pretty good. Yeah, so that's an olive leaf. Yeah, hey, uh, Redeem Branch, did you see my uh, video on olive leaves? Yeah, yellow spots, orange spots all over. I don't know what that is. do is jump up to the 10x and hopefully I won't fumble around so much this time. <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah, I'm getting a little better. <laughs> I think that's pretty good right there. Amazing, a lot of green. I still can't tell what those orange spots are. Can you tell what those are, Geeky? Or not Geeky, uh, Redeem Branch? Sorry. And is that focused or is it better come in more? Yeah, out. And in. I think that's the spot right there. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? You tell me, Redeemer Ranch, should we try for 40x on this or uh, skip that for now? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty clean on that one. Uh, and I guess uh, before we go screwing with the uh, different power levels, we'll take a little walk across the leaf. Try and get us to the main stem. Wonder if we can find a trichome. spots might be from the insects. They might be from the white flies. I have quite a white fly infestation in the greenhouse at the moment. I haven't done any feeding over the winter and we're pretty low light here. So uh, things tend to go downhill over the winter. But I just did a foliar drench last night and things should be springing back in the next week or so. Uh, but yes, they might be from insects and I'm not entirely sure. What I'd like to do eventually is be able to uh, go in with like a scalpel or something, uh, you know, dissect a bit or poke around a bit. <coughs> but I just don't have the uh, instruments for it at the moment. Oh, there you go. There's the uh, main stem. Let's see if I can get a refocus on that. corner there that might be a trichome. Let's see if I can put that more in the center of the screen. Yeah I think that might be a trichome there. Definitely a little hair sticking off the re the leaf. Lost me? Lost connection? Ah uh, DSL. Back. Okay, good. Sorry about that. That's probably just my garbage internet connection. DSL is all we have here. Uh, we're pretty rural. Oh, is your play your side? Okay. I always assume it's mine because I always have issues. <laughs> anyway, I think that that is an olive leaf trichome that we're looking at right there. That. Uh, blackish looking hair in the center. Yes, I believe it is. I'm not 100% positive, but uh, it looks a lot like one. It could be something stuck to the leaf. I can't. I'm not sure. I don't even know if I can tell. No, I can't really tell by uh, naked eye. But it could be. It could be. We'll say that. I think that the holy basil and the uh, citronella will both have trichomes on them. I'm pretty sure they will. The olive leaf may not have trichomes. It may produce its essential oils internally and then leach them through the stomata or some other function I don't know about. Yeah, like a blood vein. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of like a blood vein. <laughs> mm. 
All right, shall we move over to uh, another leaf? Oh, that's the other one I have here. Oh, that's right, I have a rosemary too. The rosemary should, uh, should show trichomes as well. I want to eat that. Oh, I already dropped it on the floor. That's great. Uh oh. Um, okay, so let me just switch slides again quick. I guess I'll throw the holy basil on now. Those olive leaves are very thick and uh, like they don't even flatten under the weight of another slide, scope slide. Whereas these uh, basil leaves, as I'm sure, if you're familiar with basil, these. Uh, these are a little uh, less resilient, so shall we say. I think I'll just uh, center us up a bit here. And uh, maybe we'll go back to the 10x initially. I'll try and get this focused in here. Here you go. So this is holy basil. Hey, thanks, Redeem Branch. I've been listening to a lot of good teachers. I still don't know it all. <laughs> I, I got a lot more I'd like to learn. I'd like to know. And even the people I learn from, you know, they're still researching and developing every day, so... You can never know it all, but uh, I'm always glad to share what I do know with people. No, no school. <laughs> no, high school graduate, that's it. I do a lot of self-learning. I've self-taught pretty much everything. Computers, plants, farming, engineering, uh, you name it. I just like to learn. I have a mind that likes to learn and I re retain information well. So I guess we'll have a uh, scroll around this leaf. Where are we going here? We're going down the leaf, like toward where the stem would be. You can see all the veins there. I think that's dirt stuck to it, or maybe even bugs, but I think it's just dust. We can go ahead and take a closer look. We'll jump up to the 10x reticle now. And uh, tweak the light a bit. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this microscope. I probably ought not to say that because I'll jinx myself. There you go, there's 10x. Yeah, I think that is dirt stuck to it. We'll uh, continue our journey along the stem here. Ten X, yes sir. See all those little trichomes? The stem is covered in trichomes. Well, not covered, but there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, you see them. Okay, good. Yeah, most people only associate trichomes with cannabis. But uh, most of the plants that produce essential oils, and pretty much all plants do produce some form of essential oil, but a lot of the plants, uh, like the herbs and that kind of stuff, produce, have trichomes and produce essential oils from those trichomes. Most of those essential oils are volatile uh, at lower temps, but uh, they can be distilled pretty easily at higher temps. And uh, that's why steam distillation is used for uh, extracting essential oils from plant material. 
basically uh, they boil below the temperature of boiling water. Some boil above, but uh, most below. Alright, we'll uh, move along the stem here. I'm glad you're enjoying this routine, Branch. Let's see if we can take it right out to the end of the stem. If I can figure out what direction I'm going here. Okay. Here, we're going to jump out a bit. There you go. A lot better when that lighting's right. I'll have to remember to adjust that a little more frequently. I also want to see, yeah, see all the trichomes coming off that stem? A lot of them. Very small. Very small. Let's see if I can jump to the 40x here. dice. Alright, I'll have to play with that uh, off air, so to speak. Let me just get us back to uh, kind of where we were. Oh, nice! Oh, nice! That cleaned up sweet. Yeah, now you get a really good look at the trichomes. Yeah, they're tiny, 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 tiny. And usually they're like clear, which is interesting. Uh, interesting things to note about uh, essential oil production as well. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of dry combs. <laughs> uh, interesting thing to note about essential oil also is, what was I gonna say? I can't remember where I was going. I don't mean. Uh, oh, essential oil production increases under the following. Um, hey, two and a half acres, welcome. We're just looking at some trichomes on a holy basil leaf under a microscope at 10x. So uh, essential oils uh, go up in production in most medicinal plants. Uh, these would be like the herbs and that kind of stuff. And the oil levels go up when those plants are under stress. That's one time. And that's where most of mainstream understanding comes from, is if you stress them, you'll get more essential oil production. But what most mainstream doesn't understand, because they haven't worked with foliar feeds and truly healthy soils, is that when you get truly healthy soils and you work with foliar feeds and you increase photosynthesis and balance trace mineral nutrition, essential oils go up tremendously. So you're on the other end of the spectrum, away from the stress, on the very healthy, happy side of the plant. So uh, that, and the other thing is, essential oil production is quite intensely influenced by ultraviolet light. 
you can stimulate additional production in artificial environments with use of ultraviolet light, specifically in the UVB spectrum, specifically I think in the 370 to 480 nanometer spectrum. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, essential oil production is also noted higher and polyphenol and flavonoid compounds are noted to be much higher and much more intense at higher elevations. Uh, it's also believed that that is due to uh, less atmosphere and therefore more UVB light on the plants. So um, these are just things that I've studied, uh, stumbled across in my research and thought I would share uh, regarding essential oils. So, uh, so that's the holy basil leaf. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and move on now to a citronella leaf. This is the uh, citronella geranium plant. This is the same plant that citronella candles are made from. And uh, all those other citronella type products that you may not even associate with the plant, that's where they come from. And I keep a citronella plant and have kept a citronella plant in my greenhouse for a long time now, uh, four or five years, uh, to, um, to have citronella on hand all the time. Every spring I propagate some out and I put them all over the different garden beds here on the farm. And then whenever mosquitoes or bugs come up and start harassing me, I go rub a little citronella on my neck. I stick a couple leaves in my pocket. And for the most part, bugs aren't a problem. There are certain days and bugs that, uh, you know, just won't quit, even with citronella. But then that's when the uh, mosquito netting mask comes out. Uh, you can stimulate it by using heat and grow lamps, uh, but that's usually, uh, that's usually better for germination. Um, see, the problem is, as a plant gets bigger, it needs more and more light and to reproduce the equivalent of sunlight at somewhere around 80,000 to 120,000 lux uh, with the use of a high pressure sodium lamp or a metal halide lamp uh, requires pretty close proximity. If you look into something called inverse square law, uh, remind me to pull up an inverse square uh, image for you if I can, um, or maybe I'll uh, Maybe I'll find a link in a minute. Uh, but basically, uh, the intensity of the light or any propagation of energy source, as you go uh, double the distance, you get quarter the power. Yes, inverse square law. Yes, correct, redeemed branch. So as you as you double distance, you uh, quarter your power basically. So if you double the distance from the light, now you've quartered the amount of energy reaching the plant and so on and so forth. So in order to simulate uh, the intensity of the sun, you have to have a light very close to the... Uh, okay, good enough, two and a half acres. Have a good night. Thanks for checking in. You have to have the light close enough to simulate uh, sunlight. And then uh, in addition to that, you have a, a lamp, artificially created lamp, and it's not producing all of the spectrum or spectra that, a, uh, that the sun produces. Um, a lot of those spectra are still under study, I believe, because uh, we see in the visible light range, but that's actually a very narrow range, and the sun produces many, many, many other frequencies. Um, and so most of the ones in the visible spectrum have been studied. You can look at plant growth response charts. Uh, if you just Google plant growth response uh, light spectrum, uh, you'll find all kinds of excellent charts on that. You'll see that in the red and blue spectrum, tremendous growth uh, gains. Uh, the blue spectrum is better for uh, for um, like vegetative growth, early growth, or for short compact growth. And the redder end of the spectrum is better for flowering and fruiting. Uh, I th it's believed that that has something to do with the, uh, the atmosphere. And as the sun gets lower in the sky, it has to come to you for more atmosphere and it's therefore oranger and it's believed that plants have evolved to adapt to that or something like that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, that's a little bit about artificial lighting and light intensity. Uh, like for example, like a 400 watt high pressure sodium will only produce about 43,000 lumens uh, per square meter. And I believe that's at uh, three foot distance or it might be two. 
so you'd need a lot of uh, HPS lamps to do uh, flowering fruiting end of the spectrum. Uh, however, if you're just starting plants, artificial lighting is an excellent way to control the light, the photo period, and uh, and that sort of thing. Let me see if I can get this in focus quick while I'm yapping. Okay, this one uh, also doesn't want to lay flat very well, so it's going to take uh, focusing in and out at different levels, I think. Um, and I think we're going to go back to the uh, lighter because uh, that's at 10x. We're going to go back to the, uh, the 4x here for starters. And come back into it a bit. Yeah, now we can actually see what we're looking at. And you can see the trichomes right away. And I can actually see trichomes on these uh, with the naked eye. They look like little fine hairs. Yeah, it does look 3D. That's because the leaf won't really sit flat under the slide and so as I zoom in and out you're actually kind of looking at a 3D image and a 2D image if you follow my perspective. <laughs> Let's see what about heat lamps under plant and light lamps above plant would that help? Heat lamps under the plant definitely can help uh, you could just do uh, you don't have to do heating lamps necessarily you could just do uh, uh, heat mats it's probably a more efficient way to do that um, and that does work uh, about 70 to 75 degrees is typically a good soil temperature for plants. Uh, but yes, heating, heating the soil can accelerate the processes um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, metabolism of the plant obviously is increased as it gets into a more comfortable temperature environment. And uh, the other thing that happens is you accelerate the biology in the soil. If you're using biology in the way that it's in the in the way that it's supposed to be used. Um, yeah, it is kind of an intense view. <laughs> we'll uh, have a little pan across here. Let's see what else we can see. Hmm. That light's jumping around on me again. I'm gonna kill this extra light. Get us a little cleaner. Right about there. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so what was I saying about heat mats? Uh, yeah, the heat heating the soil underneath can definitely help. In fact, that's one of the upgrades I want to do to the greenhouse. I want to put uh, uh, PEX hosing in from the thermal mass tanks and be able to pump heat under the plants, and that will help keep them more comfortable and come through the season a little better. And that bottom heating does help. Yeah, it's a beautiful green, isn't it? I bet you can buy that in a hardware store somewhere, citronella green. <laughs> it's probably a totally different shade of green, but <laughs> and I think that's a trichome right in the upper left there. Let's see if we can get in on that. Usually they're pretty clear looking, that's kind of black black looking, but... Oh, and the indoor bonus room. Okay, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, uh, let's see. The easiest way to do that would be like uh, uh, sand underneath it and run your water or heating coils or whatever your heating source is in the sand. Then you kind of have a buffer. You get a nice uniform temperature under everything. So let's see, we did the tomato leaf, we did the holy basil leaf, we did the olive leaf, we did the citronella leaf. Maybe we'll jump over and have a look at the rosemary leaf. If I can figure out where I hit it on myself this time, here it is. 
I put it over here where I wouldn't lose it. You know how that goes. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to bring this uh, accessory light back on for a sec. And then um, gonna pull this out of the scope. And then I'm going to take a rosemary leaf and try and pick a relatively clean part of the slide to put it on. Slide's getting dirty because all these leaves are kind of dirty. And I'm just going to take one leaf off of a rosemary sprig. And I guess we'll put it, uh, put it right side up. And hopefully it'll cooperate for the most part. kind of close to focus too, isn't it? Let me see, we might need to make some adjustments lighting wise here. Because that's a pretty, uh, oh. Get the leaf itself under it. There we go. There you go. Oh, you gotta go to bed. Okay, no problem. Have a good night, uh, Redeem Ranch. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for your commentary and participation. Much appreciated. Uh, glad you enjoyed. And uh, your name is Ron. Okay, nice to meet you, Ron. Thank you very much. Good night, man. Okay, so uh, whoever is left watching, if anyone, or for anyone who watches this on the playback. We'll just go ahead and uh, work our way along this rosemary leaf. And I think we're going to jump up to 10x. spot. Let's see if we can find the middle of the leaf. Be right there. Again, I have to, uh, the leaf isn't sitting totally flat in the slide. And I didn't, obviously didn't properly prepare these slides. I'm just kind of throwing this together on the fly. We'll just take a scan down it. Uh, those little globule round things there are trichomes on this one. I'll center it up right in the center of that little mushroom looking thing. Looks like a mushroom kind of bent off at a 45 to the right. That's a trichome. I'm going to have to uh, see if I can get this other 
other two lenses on here working correctly. If I can, it'll be nice to go into 40 and 100x. I'm going to try 40 again with this sample. Bear with me. going on with the 40x and the 100x, but I'm going to have to look into that at some point. Well, anyway, we'll just go back to the uh, to the 10x for now. And, uh, did I lose my video? something. Oh. To the heart again. That'll do it. Okay. So that's back under the 40. So we can get a better view. I'll try and squeeze the focus in here more. Okay. Well, anyway, <coughs> I just thought people might find it interesting to have a look at some different leaves under the microscope. Something I had handy. I want to keep playing with the scope and uh, getting better at it. found that interesting. Uh, thanks to all those who watched. Uh, thanks especially to Redeem Ranch for uh, interacting and uh, providing some feedback. Appreciate it. And uh, this has been another Pharmacy Seeds Network live stream. Uh, I apologize if I seem a bit amateur. I am kind of amateur when it comes to microscope use. But uh, I'll get better and we'll do some more interesting things with it. And I'll get those other two uh, reticles working, the 40 and the 100x, and then we can really zoom in on things and have a close look at things. Uh, in the meantime, I think that's it. Uh, this has been another Pharmacy Seeds Network live stream, number 0008. Thanks to all those who watched and participated.